together for Anki Dango! That's all. the front row. <laughs> yeah, there are a bunch of comedians, judgmental assholes who okay. never laugh at other people's jokes, and there are <laughs> two drop-dead gorgeous girls who be like, am I too pretty to laugh? <laughs> yeah, why? I mean, you guys are so hot that all of our entire lineup together cannot beat you. Even Gabriel cannot be laugh. So, anyway, um, this is going to be weird, yeah? Because a lot of weird shit is going on in my life and I'm gonna share with you all of that. First of all, my lingerie got declared obsolete. We have any married men in the house? Nobody is saying that. Right? People are so ashamed to admit. No, I, I was trying to talk to a married man because I was gonna ask if they know the meaning of lingerie. Uh, it's basically female underwear until uh, honeymoon. After that, it just becomes underwear. So, <laughs> so a friend came to my house. She saw my underwear, not lingerie, drying on the balcony, and she was like, wow, some vintage collection you got there. <laughs> what are they doing on your balcony? They should be in a museum. <laughs> are these heirloom pennies? Like, did your great grandma? I was like, no, bitch. I got them from my mom. <laughs> she got them from her mom. <laughs> and she stole it from some Indian princess. Turns out they are heirloom panties. <laughs> I protested, okay? I said, hey, some of them are lacy. She said, yeah, that's lace from 1976. <laughs> Asbestos was still cool. No one knew it caused cancer. <laughs> You could wear sequin bell bottoms. No one thought you were getting ready for a gay parade. <laughs> you could also smoke in an airplane because it was good for people with peanut allergies. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't kept up with the evolution of lingerie. <laughs> I recently celebrated my birthday. Ooh. You know, don't vote that. Silence was the right response. <laughs> Because A, I celebrated it three months ago and I'm still trying to milk it, which tells you I'm an attention whore. <laughs> and B, I turned old. <laughs> I wasn't gonna tell you my age, of course. I know some of you will hate me for saying this, especially you, sir, because I don't look old like you do. Um, <laughs> which is a bummer, because no one leaves their seats on a bus for me. But the signs of aging are there, okay? First of all, I need reading glasses. <laughs> which is annoying as fuck. Especially ladies, when I'm trying to shave down there. <laughs> it's like trying to mow a lawn without knowing where the flower is. <laughs> One mistake, there's blood all over the flower bed. Your sex life is ruined for the next few days. I don't have one. <laughs> sex life, not flower, that I have. <laughs> I can't carry my reading glasses to shower, right? <laughs> Which is why I tend to make mistakes in the messages I leave down here for my lovers. <laughs> Silence is the right response. <laughs> I'm gonna explain. I like to be with younger guys like you <laughs> because they have great eyesight. <laughs> But they're always in a rush, right? So I leave messages down there for them. Like, slow down. This is a happy meal, savor it. There is a toy in the end. You won't get it if you choke on your meal. But recently I was with a guy my age, which you're never gonna know, by the way. And he was like, honey, why have you written crappy me? I was like, oh, this isn't working. So now I need to leave additional messages for my older lovers. Like, take your glasses off, you shouldn't be reading this. I recently got diagnosed with urticaria. Anybody has any clue what the fuck that is? No, okay, I, me neither. So, my doctor told me it's an autoimmune disease, and I was like, ooh, and he's like, no, no, it's bad. <laughs> you don't get automatically immune to something. 
uh, he explained to me that basically my body is under stress and uh, it's revolting against its own self. And I was like, oh, that's what I did years ago when I was a teenager against my parents. He said, exactly. So I said, so what am I gonna do now, doctor? He said, well, you have to be kind to your body. You have to tell her you love her. You have to love her more. And I was like, doc, I follow what I like to call the 2M rule. I meditate and masturbate every day. <laughs> Usually at the same time. <laughs> I'm economical, bitch. Time is money. So that's self-love 101. I don't know what more to do, right? Um, but I did have a chat with my body after the diagnosis. I told you it's going to get weird. Um, <laughs> I told her, babe, Stop acting so precious. <laughs> and my body was like, bitch, you sound like Dave. <laughs> Dave's my ex. Then I remembered, Dave used to say this every time he couldn't make me come, which was every time we had sex. <laughs> but hey, Dave had promised, okay, he had a job. And he was also splitting housework. So I thought of helping him out. I wrote a book for him, a user manual. 156 ways to make a woman come. Then one day, I took Dave out on a walk and gently broached the subject. Babe, I got a user manual for you. Will you read it? He said, yeah, I like user manuals. I have read one. I was like, okay, which one? He said, Bible? <laughs> 10 steps of how to go to heaven? I was very excited, right? Dave is fully in. But my weird brain, you know, uh, instead of cashing in on that moment, I told him, but babe, have you noticed that Bible has nails, chains, whips, red wine? <laughs> he was as unsure as you all are as to where this is going. I didn't stop. <laughs> I didn't stop. I told him, did you also notice, babe, that Bible has a ripped dude getting nailed in a dungeon for three nights? by burly men wearing kinky outfits. <laughs> this is when Dave started running away from me. <laughs> I kept chasing him, shouting at the top of my voice, babe, Bible is a user manual, but for BDSM. <laughs> you don't believe me? It even has a second coming. So yeah, I never saw him again. <laughs> Another weird thing that's going on is, I met God online, online, uh, on Instagram. And I'm gonna only talk about the Christian God, okay? Because my Catholic friends have told me that they are cool about making fun of, of their gods. So no Hindu or Muslim gods can touch. <laughs> so anyway, uh, he, uh, I, after I came back from Edinburgh, uh, he texted me on Instagram. Uh, he said, hey, I saw you in Scotland. It was fun. And I was like, oh, thank God. Did you bless me after the show? He said, no, I was there as a chair. I was like, why would you go all the way to Scotland to be a chair in my show? And then he was like, so you don't be nervous. I'm like, an empty chair is what makes a comedian nervous. You clearly have not done your homework. Then he asked me, do you have OnlyFans? See, I don't know what OnlyFans is, okay? I asked him that, uh, is that an app for only your fans? Like, I know your fans go to temples and mosques and churches, but are you trying to increase your online presence now? <laughs> I'm impressed, right? He said, no, silly. It's where you sell me your nudes. <laughs> I was like, oh my fucking God. You're paying for nudes now? All these years, I send them to your sons for free? <laughs> now I need to raise some backdated bills. <laughs> what other weird thing is going on? Ah, yes. I have started naming objects. Like you guys name your pets. Any pet owners in the house? Yes. Dog or cat? Dog? Dog. Uh, what do you call him? King. Of course. <laughs> Tells a lot about their life, isn't it? <laughs> Look, I met this mic uh, about seven minutes ago. I'm calling it Steve. <laughs> because it reminds me of a guy called Steve who would listen to me 
patiently for hours, right? And unlike the other seed, if this one tries to give me feedback, just one thump on its head and shuts the fuck up. <laughs> also, unlike the other seed, this one stays hard the whole time. <laughs> Even if all I'm doing is just talking, I call my vibrator Moby Dick. <laughs> Don't get excited by the word Dick. It's the, it's the name of a novel. I'm sure half of you have not read it. Uh, Moby Dick is the name of a massive white sperm whale. Now, I haven't named my vibrator Moby Dick because it's massive. It's not, it's just a regular dildo. Nor have I named it because it's white. Who has a white dildo anyway, right? Mine is purple. <laughs> I haven't named it because uh, sperm come, comes out of it. Nothing comes out of it. Nor have I named it because it bites. Um, sometimes I wish it did though. A little bit of nipple down there won't be bad. Uh, I have named my vibrator Moby Dick because of my unhealthy obsession with dicks, which I think is gonna cause my downfall. And if you're not laughing, it means you're not getting the references. You should go and read the book. <laughs> the next one is easier. You'll get that reference. I call my vagina Titanic. Stop! Not because it's massive. It's not. I told you I don't have a sex life. It's small and tight. Uh, nor because thousands of men have drowned in it. I'm nowhere near the number. I'm trying, guys. I have named my vagina Titanic for two reasons. First, it's kind of expensive to get in there. And second, because it's a wet container of dead semen. <laughs> so you see, I live in Vietnam. I'm a short brown female with a dodgy vagina called Titanic. <laughs> So I am at the bottom of the fuckable females pyramid in Vietnam. Yeah, guys I want don't want me. But first let, let me explain how the sex pyramid thing works, okay? On top of it are like these two, three very fuckable dudes who I see and go, ooh, I so wanna take you home tonight. I don't know why I'm looking at you. Um, then, as, then as we come down to the middle, the numbers go up, the sex appeals down. These are guys who I see and go, hmm, yeah, we could fuck. I need a few drinks before. Do you have MDMA on you? It usually helps. Then as we come down to the bottom, it's just, my friends. <laughs> Ugly guys. Uh, see, you and I will never be friends. You are such a room full of good looking people. Um, but you know, ugly guys are a girl's best friend. They are always around. Always paying bills and compliments. Always carrying our bags and emotional packages. And the best thing about them is that you will never have the urge to drunk fuck them and then regret the next morning. <laughs> ugly guys are very useful, like bedside tables. You want them big, but not too big. Big enough to hold your reading lamp, your magazines, your medicines. Nobody buys a bedside table too far, right? <laughs> Everyone has a sex pyramid. Um, who's on top of your sex pyramid? Give me a type. Who do you consider, or what type do you consider to be most fuckable? Couldn't have been more cliche, is it? <laughs> Mahia, you could have cut it, but then you are a little fair, I think, so it's not working for you tonight, at least. Um, how about you, ma'am? <laughs> That's a very high benchmark. Yeah. And you have to probably go under water to find me. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, on top of my sex pyramid are other uh, expats of Vietnam, but not Indians, not Malaysians, not the Japanese. Don't get me wrong, I'm not racist. I don't, yeah, I don't do Asians because they feel like relatives. <laughs> it's too close to home. I live miles away from home, so I don't have to give a fuck. Figuratively and literally. <laughs> So yeah, on top of my sex pyramid are these white guys who don't want me, which also kind of makes sense. Because if you are a white guy in Vietnam, you would rather sample the local cuisine every day, right? 
It's cheaper, fresher, easier to digest, and most importantly, available on the roadside. <laughs> That joke does, is doing the best here tonight. Never gets a clap. Indian food, on the other hand, is spicy as fuck. And much like Indian women, Indian food will talk back to you. <laughs> and you might shit your pants. I mean, I bet a lot of foreigners like to have an Indian on their home, way home from a bar, but you know, I need a guy who wants an Indian for breakfast and lunch and dinner and then breakfast. Let's face it, like foreigners don't have the guts to have an Indian every day. <laughs> Only Indians do, but there's a catch. Do we have Indian men in the house? I know one is there for sure. <laughs> do, you, do you like to have Indian food every day? Okay. <laughs> Even he doesn't want Indian food. <laughs> what are my chances? Seriously. Okay, <laughs> hypothetically speaking, if you had to have Indian food every day, would you prefer home cooked food or restaurant food? Every day? No. Home. So, Indian people, Indian men have the guts to have an Indian every day, but they like food cooked by their moms. <laughs> <laughs> There's this dude that I matched on Tinder, and this is the first text he sent me Hey, if I come to your place, will you cook for me? <laughs> like my mom does? Oh. He's Indian, you can tell. I told him, dude, we matched on Tinder. I'll do more than what your mom does, I hope. <laughs> I mean, I'll cook you a meal and do your laundry too. I, he came, didn't bring his laundry, thank God. He ate. I wish I could say he ate and I came, but never mind. <laughs> He didn't stick around for long and before leaving told me his mom's hand jobs are delivered with more panache. <laughs> that day I realized my pronouns are FML. <laughs> Do you guys uh, notice that a shitload of things come with user manuals and we don't read them because we are smart people? But then a lot of things that should come with user manuals don't. How to Make a Girl Come. I've written that book though. You can talk to me after the show, I'll give you a copy. Um, babies, how to keep them alive for 100 days. Small wins. Sometimes the same book could work for two things, right? Um, cactus and husband, safe to assume both are bricks. <laughs> Rescue dogs and Tinder dates. Let me explain. <laughs> Every single time the same thing happens, I just forget if I'm bringing home a dog or a date. <laughs> I bring him home, I give him a cute name, the last one was called Baguette. Yes, because he was too big. Um, <laughs> I was really enjoying time with Baguette, okay? I'll come back uh, from work and he will give me a nice long leg. Good boy, Baguette. Good boy. <laughs> But then he didn't know when to stop, so I had to discipline him. Like, that's enough licking for tonight, Baguette. Go sleep in your basket. Not the laundry basket, the other one. It was also amazing to take him out on walks. The people would stop and tell me how gorgeous he is. I was beginning to think he's the one. Then one day he saw a squirrel and took off. And I never saw him again. Remember Dave? I never saw him again too. <laughs> Very difficult, yeah, to, to differentiate between them. <laughs> also, guys, put your fingers in your ears. Ladies, you will relate to this. We do meet men who we see and think the kindest thing to do would be to put them down. <laughs> I mean, these are the most annoying ones who would never learn how to use a toilet properly. <laughs> Or be so clingy and needy that even if you want to pass him on to your best friend who could really use an emotional support creature, even she would say, hard pass. <laughs> so yeah, I'm on Tinder. <laughs> that's the weirdest thing that's going on in my life. I do read Tinder bios to, to, to basically decode what white men write and what they really mean. I'm gonna tell you what they write and what they really mean. They write open-minded. They mean open butt. 
That's an exploratory man who likes to get to the bottom of things from behind. <laughs> so discuss three sums and strap-ons. Never mention condoms. Because open-minded men have felt claustrophobic in latex since 1839. <laughs> it's on Google. It's fact-checked. <laughs> the second bio that I see quite often is uh, here for something casual only, which translates as he wants to fuck the whole world. No judgment. <laughs> Just don't send your kids to him. Uh, <laughs> now this man won't do anything fancy like a dinner date. He won't even hold your hand in public, okay? He will also tell you how he never goes down on girls until they become his girlfriend. What he doesn't know is that you don't want to be his girlfriend, so he won't go down on you either. <laughs> The last one that I see is that looking for a serious relationship only. No F F FWB, no ONS, no escorts, no massage, very reassuring. I matched with one of these recently. I'm gonna tell you how the text conversation went. He texted me, what are you doing tonight? Which translates as, I have an erection. <laughs> I said I'm going out with friends, which translates as I might come, but not immediately. <laughs> He said, male friends or female? Which translates as, red flag. <laughs> I said, both. He said, don't let the male friends come close to you. Which translates as, I have a small dick. <laughs> I said, why? He said, I'll be jealous. Which translates as, when I said I have a small dick, I meant it. <laughs> it's below the national average, OK? But we haven't met yet, which translates as maybe it's better we keep it that way. <laughs> he said, but we will meet soon, because I want to be serious with you. Which translates as he has ambitions <laughs> to keep his gene pool going by making his tiny dick come inside me. <laughs> it's okay, we can be supportive of each other's ambitions, right? Uh, but this is when my Indian mom spirit kicked in. So I asked him, what's your job, dude? Yeah, because in India, as long as the size of the salary is huge, you know, nothing else matters, right? To which he texted, I'm an independent software developer. Which translates as, I just came on my keyboard. And he backed it up by saying, but I have a huge try. This doesn't need translation. We know what he's overcompensating for. I was just wondering how huge is his try? Do I need to bring tweezers to pick his confidence up? All right, we'll give this guy a break because his tiny dick has already come once. He's not going to get it up anytime soon. And that's going to be my set for you tonight. You guys are amazing. So she's just going to talk about God till Malaysia deports her. <laughs> and that is it for our show.